An animal like man does not know. A fool does not understand this. When the wicked flourish as the grass, and all the evildoers blossom, it is for them to be destroyed forever. But you, O Yahweh, are exalted forever. For lo, your enemies, O Yahweh, for lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the evildoers shall be scattered. You shall lift up my heart as a wild ox, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil, and my eyes shall look upon my enemies, and my ears shall hear the evildoers who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish as the palm tree. He shall grow as the cedars in Lebanon, those planted in the house of Yahweh. And the courts of our Elohim shall flourish. They shall bear fruit in old age and be fat and fresh to declare that Yahweh is upright, my rock, and in him is no evil. So here on the island of Cyprus in the eastern Mediterranean, the green grass is flourishing. That's the wheat grass, the barley grass, and the almond trees are starting to blossom. And so it's just that time of year to look for the destruction of the wicked. And so it's that time, and that's why I have this video, and especially with everything going on in World War III right now. I'm going to take a look at everything through the lens of Scripture, through the prophecies, of the prophet Zechariah and the prophet Ezekiel. This video is a World War III alert in regards to Bible prophecy about the rider of the red horse and the great sword of war. I'm Brother Nicholas James Vanderlane, and today is the first day of the 12th month on Yahweh Elohim's solar calibrated non-Gregorian 364-day Dead Sea Scroll calendar it's February 17th, 2023. That's the Gregorian equivalent. And I'm recording this video and publishing it from the island of Cyprus. This video is a World War III alert. And I'm going to be taking a look at this prophecy of the rider of the red horse in the great sword of war. This video is also on Ezekiel chapter 32 and 33. I'm going to be taking a look at this prophecy because it's Part of it is unfulfilled, and we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take a look at this. It's the Watchman Shofar blast regarding the sword of war and terror in the land of the living, which is the Holy Land. So this is the land of the living. This is one possible boundaries for the land of the living, and here's another possibility for the land of the living, all the way up to the River Euphrates, down to the Wadi River of Egypt. The 24th day of the 11th month, which just happened seven days ago, on that day is when the prophet Zechariah received his prophecy of Zechariah 1 verse 7 through 6 verse 15. And this was very important prophecy because in it, it talks about the rider of the red horse. And also in it, it's an end times prophecy because he prophesies of nuclear war. I'll be taking a look at that prophecy. And to me, this prophecy is very important. Every year, around the 24th day of the 11th month, I have made a video either on it or around it about this prophecy since 2019. So I've made videos on this prophecy going back 2019, 20, 21, 22, and now this year, 2023. Here are three of the videos that I've made on it. As many of you guys already know, Bible prophecy can be extremely challenging to interpret in real time as things are moving. This is why followers of Messiah Yeshua have been instructed to watch. Time and world circumstances have changed a lot since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and I'm updating the interpretation. On my channel, I've uniquely and proprietarily identified the fulfillment of a 2,600 year old prophecy of Ezekiel, which, have, which was fulfilled already four years ago. It's bona fide fulfilled, it's bona fide word for word, a fulfillment of the prophecy, hallelujah, and it's been fulfilled and I've shared about it on my channel. But if you're not watching my channel, you haven't got this prophecy interpretation anywhere. But many other interpretations as to the timing of the end times and end time scenarios 
My interpretations have been a work in progress. Some things like the re Restore Jubilee, I'm very close and need to make a couple of small adjustments and provide those several other possible Jubilee scenarios I've yet to propose. So going back to my video from one year ago where, that I filmed in Egypt, it was about two hours and 30 minutes long and it basically had like four videos in one, but it contained so much important information and inter interpretations, some correct and some close. So some of the things in this video are gonna be an adjustment from last year's video. More so, this video is about the rider of the red horse and how he appears chronologically at the opening of the second seal in the book of Revelation. The rider of the red horse in the book of Revelation, he's given a great sword. And I have identified that great sword to be the great sword of war. And that great sword of war is none other than nuclear World War III. It will be the greatest war the earth has ever seen. And this is my video from a year ago about the Watchman's Trumpet terror in World War III. Nuclear bomb going off right there. The only other place other than the book of Revelation where we see a man riding upon a red horse is the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 1 through 6. 1 verse 6 through 615. And that's why every year about this time, around the 24th day of the 11th month, I try to get a video out on it as we're getting closer and closer. But we can see here, Zechariah saw by night upon the 24th day of the 11th month, which was a week ago now from the time of me filming this video. And he saw by, by night and behold, a man riding upon a red horse. The report to the rider of the red horse is that the earth is still and is at rest. So let me go ahead and read to you the beginning of this prophecy. Upon the four and twentieth day, which is the twenty-fourth day of the eleventh month, which is the month of Sabbat, in the second year of Darius, came the word of Yahweh unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Ida, the prophet, saying, I saw by night and behold, a man riding upon a red horse. And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom, and behind him were their red horses speckled in white. Then said I, O my master, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom Yahweh hath sent, to walk to and fro throughout the earth. And they answered the angel of Yahweh that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth. And behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. So that is how this prophecy begins. It, there is a report that's given to the angel of Yahweh by these red horses and speckled horses and white horses, okay, that the earth sitteth still and is at rest. And now, a year later from my last video, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine coming up on a one-year anniversary, it did not happen until the 24th day of February. That's when everything went crazy. But last year, on the 24th day of the 11th month, which was... February 10th, 2022, which was two weeks before the Russian invasion into Ukraine, the earth was sitting still and was at rest. So now with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we can no longer say that the earth sitteth still and is at rest. So again, at the time of my video a year ago on Zechariah's prophecy, the earth was still and at rest. There was no wars, and the USA had just pulled out of Afghanistan. Yes, Russia was amassing troops and equipment on the border of the Donbass, but no war and no special military operation had yet started at the time of Zechariah's prophecy last year. And as it turned out, that Russia's special military operation, invasion of Ukraine, turned into what was called the prologue of World War III. And I've documented this all in my videos. If you haven't watched these videos, you're missing out. 
in this video, I interpret Vladimir Putin's name and I match his name. I sync Vladimir Putin's name with Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. You have to watch that video. In this one, Dmitry Medvedev says the horsemen of the apocalypse are on the way. He was right, right? Because the Red Horse report can't happen like that again now that they've invaded Russia. And my other video on World War III here. We are in World War III. It's a proxy World War III right now. It's being fought on Ukrainian soil. And we are one escalation away from nuclear war, which is the great sword of war. And that will happen at the timing when the, red, when the rider of the red horse is given the great sword. So that is something to consider. And I really want to make it known to everybody watching this video that kingdom against kingdom is speaking of a world war. Nation against nation, that is regional conflicts. Kingdom against kingdom is a world war, specifically nuclear World War III, which is also the time of Jacob's trouble. And now, about maybe 1.5 years ago, or maybe like two over two years ago, Russia has changed their political doctrine to now also refer to the West as the Anglo-Saxons. And here you can see on RT, this isn't from 43 minutes ago, that was from a year ago. This is just the same slide that I'm using. Lavrov on Anglo-Saxon plans for Ukraine. You guys have to understand that this isn't this East-West thing. This is a time of Jacob's trouble thing. The West being the Saxons, Genesis 21, 12, for an Isaac shall your seed be called. So the Saxons are the sons of Isaac. They are Isaac's seed, the Saxons. The Israelites are the Western peoples. Majority of them through their Y haplogroup DNA. Not every single person in the West is an Israelite, but if you contain the Israelite Y DNA haplogroup, which is likely the R1B haplogroup, it appears to me that the World War III will be destroyed and it will be the time of Jacob's trouble. But we are talking about a possibly an Esau versus Jacob war in World War III. So as I said, the prophecy of Zechariah verses 1 through 7 through 615, it starts off with the rider of the red horse, the report. There's a bunch of messianic and uh, redemption prophecies in there. Then we get to chapter 5 of that same prophecy, and it is talking about a flying scroll. And it's not a woman in the basket. It's a wicked fire offering in the basket. And it was correctly interpreted back in 2010 by Tibisaurus Rex. He did a three-part series on it. Part one is might not be available, but he has part two and part three up. And he identified that the flying scroll are nuclear ICBM missiles with their lead, which is their uranium bomb inside the nuclear missile. So you need to watch this prophecy, or this interpretation of nuclear war prophesied in Zechariah, but it's in this prophecy that started on the, the 24th day of the 11th month. And in that prophecy, it talks about nuclear ICBM missiles flying over the face of the whole earth. So it's going to go over everywhere. So here is Revelation chapter 6, verse 3 through 4. I understand it is directly related to Zechariah's prophecy he received on the 24th day of the 11th month. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon, okay, the rider of the red horse, to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. That great sword is the great sword of war. Am I saying that last year on the Russian invasion that the second seal was open? No, I am not saying that at all. That is not the great sword. This is just a military conflict going on right now, it started as a special military operation, turned into a war with Ukraine and with all of the backing that Ukraine has and all the volunteers, 
It's now a proxy World War III. The Great Sword hasn't been given to the Rider of the Red Horse, I don't understand right now. I would not think so. But as soon as it, he, he gets this sword, peace is going it, it, to, it's going to go out. It's going to go down. You can see the correlation between Zechariah chapter 1, verse 7 and 10, a man riding upon the red horse. And the report was, when the other horse riders answered the angel of Yahweh that stood among the myrtle trees, they said, we have walked to and fro throughout the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. It's quiet. Here in Revelation, we see there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. So here you have the earth sit is still and is at rest. Here you have peace taken from the earth. So a man riding on a red horse, a man riding on a red horse, power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. We say here the peace was on the earth. It was sitting still and at rest. And then there was given unto him a great sword. So after this man went out, the rider of the red horse goes out. After the second seal breaks, the rider of the red horse goes out. And then he was given a red sword, a great sword. He was given a great sword, and that great sword is a great sword of war, World War III. So now let me go ahead and overview Zechariah chapter 1, verse 6 through 615. So here I am in Zechariah chapter 1. Now, this is not part of the prophecy that we're looking at, but Zechariah's prophecy starts out with a call to repentance. So that's very important. He's calling on everyone to repent. It's time to repent. It's time for the wicked to repent, pay, repay the pledge and do what's right. It's been time for that. And it's time for the righteous to not practice wickedness. And then here we see the beginning of this chapter here of the prophecy. And we see a man among the myrtle trees, that's the rider of the red horse. We see mercy is promised to Jerusalem after 70 years, talks of, which is the 70th year of Jubilee, and that's for another video. We see the four horns of the craftsmen that scattered Jerusalem. They're going to regather. Here in Zechariah chapter 2, we see a man measuring Jerusalem. That goes in line with Ezekiel chapter 40, so that's part of the millennial reign. We see uh, this one, this part of the chapter is subtitled, by pre later authors as the redemption of Israel, which has a theme with Ezekiel chapter 40, which is the 70th Jubilee also. We see clean garments given to Joshua the high priest. This is a messianic prophecy uh, regarding the high priest for the millennial reign. Zechariah chapter four, the golden lampstand with two olive trees and the two sons of fresh oil. What are these? Two anointed ones, the two sons of fresh oil. There's two messiahs, it appears, the two sons of fresh oil. Or this is speaking of the two witnesses. Zechariah chapter 5, we see the flying scroll and the wicked flyer offering, which is the nuclear ICBM missiles that fly over the face of the whole earth. It gives us the dimensions of the nuclear ICBM missiles, flying Bengila. And then in Zechariah chapter 6, we see the four chariots and then the crown and the temple. We see the gold crown and then four silver crowns. And this has to do with the millennial reign. So that's something to consider of this prophecy. You all should definitely read this prophecy for yourself. Chapter 1 verse 7 through 615. And now that I've gone over Zechariah's prophecy, I want to talk about Ezekiel chapter 32 and 33 and about the warning, the sword of war, tear in the land of the living, the holy land. And it's very important about this because this person is given a great sword, and I'm going to talk about the, the word sword here in Ezekiel chapter 32. Because in all the prophecies of the Bible, the, the word sword is most used and concentrated in the prophecy of Ezekiel chapter 32. So here you can see, Ezekiel chapter 32, verse 17 through 31. This is just part of this prophecy. I'm going to go over the entire prophecy and the prophecies that are connected to it. Um, but as you can see here in red is the word sword. Sword, 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 sword. It's everywhere in this chapter. It's the most concentrated location of the word sword. And it's very important. 
because I don't think that this prophecy has been fulfilled yet. And I understand that this prophecy is going to happen prior to Ezekiel 38 and 39. But you wouldn't know this if you aren't watching my videos. I explain this in my video on Vladimir Putin's name, on interpreting it and finding his name in Bible prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. But not a lot of people care about what I'm doing. They all want to watch rapture dream videos and all this other garbage. So anyways... I'm talking about Ezekiel's prophecy here, Ezekiel 32, verse 1 through 16, which was given on the first day of the 12th month in the 12th year of their captivity. And then Ezekiel chapter 32, 17 through chapter 33, verse 20, was given on the 15th day of the 12th month of the 12th year. And so I want to take a look at this prophecy mainly right here about Egypt being cast into the pit, which is a spiritual Egypt, I understand, the sword and terror in the land of the living. So I'm going to be looking at this prophecy right here. Now, I say it's related to this prophecy, but I understand that this prophecy, of Ezekiel chapter 32, verse 1 through 16, was fulfilled when Cambyses II, he came and fought with the 26th dynasty of Egypt, and defeated the 26th dynasty of Egypt, of Egypt in the Battle of Pelusium in Egypt, right south of Gaza, right there in the northern, north of the Sinai Peninsula on the Mediterranean Sea. So that is something to consider that this part of the prophecy, Ezekiel 32, 1 through 16, has been fulfilled. But this part here, the sword and terror of the land of the living, I don't think that this has been fulfilled. And that's just my best understanding. So, like I've said in all my other videos, you're in this prophecy right here. We are in Ezekiel chapter 33, 21 through 29. We are in this prophecy. We are in this prophecy. You guys are not paying attention, but we are literally inside this prophecy. As I've proven and I said in, my previous, in the beginning of the video, this part of the prophecies are being fulfilled, and I've been documenting it all on my channel. So now, Ezekiel 32, the sword in the land of the living, it happens before the Ezekiel 38 and 39 Magog invasion on the mountains of Israel. You have to watch my video on interpreting Vladimir Putin's name to understand what that is about. No Bible prophecy teacher will tell you these things because they don't know Bible prophecy. By the spirit of wisdom and understanding, I know these things, hallelujah. When has anyone of you out there ever heard any Bible prophecy teacher on YouTube say, talk about the Ezekiel 32 war, and say that the Ezekiel 32 war happens before the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war? Watch my video on Vladimir Putin to check that out. So here I am in Ezekiel chapter 32. And this is the prophecy. It was given on the first day of the 12th month. And as I said, this prophecy, I understand, was fulfilled when Cambyses II, who got the title King of Babylon, that he inherited from his father, Cyrus the Great, he came out and defeated the Egyptians at the Battle of Pelusium around 525 BC. But what has not been fulfilled, I don't think, is this prophecy two weeks later. And this is what is so interesting in this prophecy that came on the 15th day of that month we, it doesn't say the 12th month but it says the 12th year now here it came to pass in the 12th year in the 12th month in the first day of the month it came to pass also in the 12th year in the 15th day of the month so the 12th month is the last month of the year so it also came to pass in the 12th year in the 15th day of the month that means this did not happen in the first month or the second month or the third month. It happened two weeks later. So here it looks like war was prophesied on Egypt. But then there's something that happened here at the end about Egypt being cast into the pit. And this is something that's really interesting because it looks like it's for our day now. And this prophecy that was given on the 15th day of the 12th month, this is when the watchman was made. Ezekiel was made a watchman a second time in this prophecy on that day. And what's most important is, is that this watchman is talking about the sword. And let me go ahead and read this real quick. 
And again, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of that land take a man of their coast and set him up for their watchmen, if when, okay, so if when, that's like a maybe kind of when he sees, if he sees it, or when he sees it, or if when he sees it, sees it, the sword cometh upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and taketh them away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman seeth the sword come and bloweth not the trumpet, and the people are not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, and his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So, look at this word, the sword. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land. What sword is the watchman supposed to be looking out for? See, this chapter break is artificially put there. This same prophecy is part of the prophecy that was given here on the 15th day of the 12th month. And that watchman is supposed to be not looking for the rapture. He's supposed to be looking for the sword. What sword? The sword that's going to come upon his own land from where he's from. And the sword that's going to be coming upon the land here, the land of the living, which I've already shared with you where the land of the living is. It's in this area here. Or this is the allotment of Ezekiel chapter 47 and 48. Could be from, from the south to the north. Or in this area here or somewhere in between. This is the land of the living. So terror is going to be coming upon the land of the living per Ezekiel chapter 32. So any watchman out there that's looking for the rapture, you're not supposed to be looking for the rapture. It dawned on me a year ago through my Bible study, hallelujah, by the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the watchman's supposed to be looking for the coming sword that's going to be coming on his own land. It says it right here. Okay? If I bring a sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him up for a watchman, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, he's supposed to blow the trumpet and warn the people. So the sword... That sword right here is connected to this prophecy. Right here in Ezekiel chapter 32, verses 17. That prophecy goes all the way up to Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 20. It starts here and goes all the way up there. But this prophecy is really interesting because it's connected to the first day of the 12th month today. And, and it goes all the way up into the same theme of the watchman, even though it stops here, the sword is right here. It comes up into right here, which starts a brand new prophecy all the way up to Ezekiel 38 and 39. So there's like a transitioning thing going on in this prophecy when you take a look at it. So let me go ahead and talk about this Ezekiel chapter 32 war that's going to come up, and it's going to happen before Ezekiel 38 and 39. So... It came to pass in the twelfth year, the fifteenth day of the month, that the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her, the daughters of the famous nations, unto the nether parts of the earth, with them that goeth down into the pit. Okay, so we know in the book of Revelation, Jerusalem was spiritual Sodom and Egypt. What Egypt is this talking about? The Freemason USA, Egypt? Because free, Egyptian Freemasonry is prevalent in the United States. Is it talking about that being Egypt? Is it Egypt? I don't think that this is talking about the Egypt that is in the continent of Africa. I think that this Egypt is talking about a spiritualized Egypt, not the country of Egypt, but the spiritualized Egypt. Son of man, will for the multitude of Egypt and cast them down, even her, the daughters of the famous nations. There are no greater famous nations than Great Britain, Great Britain, France, Belgium, Netherlands, okay, England. So those are the daughters of the famous nations. And then you have Egypt, which is probably the USA. Cast them down to the nether parts of the earth with them that goeth down into the pit. 
Whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down, be thou laid with the uncircumcised. So they are not laid, they are not circumcised, but they're going to go down laid with the circumcised. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword. Draw her in all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. They are gone down. They lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. So they're going to be uncircumcised people. They're going to help the Israelites, the famous nations, the daughters of the famous nations, like possibly, that's a possible interpretation of this, slain by the sword. Asher, which is Assyria, modern day Syria, is there in all her company. Okay, Ashur, that's possibly Kurdistan as well. In all her company, his graves are about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. There is Elam, and all her multitude round about her grave. And Elam is western Iran. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised in the nether parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living. Yet they have borne their shame, and they go down with them that go down into the pit. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain, with all her multitude, her graves, are round about him. All of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though their terror was caused in the land of living, yet they have borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. He is put in the midst of them that be slain. And what is interesting is we see the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, Iran, being embedded in the southern Golan Heights, where Assyria is, right there on the other side of the Golan Heights, in Assyria. So you see Ashur and Elam, they're right next, first and the second, they're tied together. So that's something to consider. There's Meshek and Tubal. Meshek and Tubal is southern Russia, so this is speaking of Russia. And we know Russia is in Syria right now. They have uh, uh, air bases and they have a Navy base in Syria. And they are tight with the Syrian government. And all her multitude, her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Though they are caused their terror in the land of the living, and they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which gone down to hell with their weapons of war, and they have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquities shall be upon their bones, that, that they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. Yea, thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised, and shall lie with them that are slain with the sword. So interesting regarding Russia, or Meshek and Tubal here. They were the terror in the land of the living, were is implied, but also they go... They put their weapons under their own heads, which means that maybe their ordinances got blown up and it just really demolished them at their bases or some, something like that. There's Edom, her kings and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them that were slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised and with them that go down to the pit. Very interesting that Edom... And her kings and all her princes, they did not cause terror in the land of the living. And that could be the Edomite Jews. They go, they are slain by the sword, and they lie with the uncircumcised, and they go down with them that go down to the pit. But they did not cause terror in the land of the living. These are one of the few that did not cause terror in the land of the living. So maybe they were in the land of the living, and the sword came upon them. I might have to work that one out a little bit more. It's very difficult uh, to identify Edom here. There be the princes of the north, all of them, all the Zidonians, Lebanon, which is Hezbollah. And Hezbollah is connected with the Ar Iranians or Elamites through the IRGC. So that is Hezbollah and Iran are together. Which are gone down with the slain, with their terror, they are ashamed of their might, and they lie uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword, and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. So they, Zidonians, brought their terror as well, which is Hezbollah. Pharaoh shall see them, 
and shall be comforted over all his multitude. So Pharaoh is the ruler of this, whether it be the ruler of the Jewish state or the ruler of USA. Even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith Yahweh, for have caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith Yahweh Elohim. So how this battle ends is very interesting because Pharaoh sees the destruction. He sees that he killed all the multitude of these people, of Asher and Elam and Meshech and Tubal and the Zidonians, which is in Lebanon. So he sees this. And he's comforted the fact that he's killed all these people. But even Pharaoh and all his army are slain by the sword. So he knows that he's going to destroy these people. Yet he dies in this battle slain by the sword. And then it says, uh, saith Yahweh Elohim, For I have caused my terror in the land of the living. That's This is now Yahweh Elohim speaking, that Yahweh caused the terror in the land of the living. And he, speaking of Pharaoh, shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith Yahweh Elohim. So now this is very interesting. So I might not have it right that this is the USA. It very well could be uh, it, uh, the Jewish state of Israel because they are in the land of the living. So this is something that we won't really know for sure until we look back on. But I think that this happens before the Ezekiel 38 and 39. I don't think that this happened when uh, Cambyses II came and beat Samtek III in the 26th dynasty of Egypt in 525 BC. And that's when we get into the Watchmen chapter. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land... Well, Yahweh is going to bring the sword upon a land, and this brings up Yahweh's sword. And we read about Yahweh's sword in Ezekiel chapter 21. I have mentioned this sword before, the great sword uh, of Yahweh in Ezekiel chapter 21. It, it's sharpened and it's glistened, and it's put in the hand of the slayer, so that's something to consider. Possibly that was when the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. But in that prophecy of Ezekiel 21, Ammon in modern state of Jordan, which are the Ammonites, and Jerusalem are both destroyed. I don't know if that happened where the Ammonites were destroyed by the Babylonians. So if that be the case, then Ezekiel 33 is also referencing the sword of Ezekiel chapter 21 and I just don't have the time to go into that prophecy right now I've done a video on it watch my videos I've talked about it before in the past so everybody out we are in a proxy World War three it can go nuclear at any moment one miscalculation or one preemptive strike you know especially to those in the USA one preemptive strike and it's just done so we don't know exactly what's next. We don't know the timetable, whether it's going to be this year or next year, springtime at this time next year, possibly can happen. But this terror looks like it's going to be a preemptive strike, a preemptive attack on the land of the living, which is the Jewish, which is the modern Jewish state, the Edomites, uh, the Edomite Jews in Israel. There are also Israelite Jews, but this is about a terror attack in the land of the living, and that's going to be, we won't really understand the Bible prophecy until we're looking back. Remember, kings go out for war on the first day of the first month. That's when kings go out for war at the turn of the year. So the year is starting to turn. It's going to turn. The Tekufa is on the first day of the first month, and the first day of the first month is the day following the spring equinox. And that's when kings go out for war. I got videos all on that. So who knows how things are going to play out. So I'm signing off. And shalom to all my brothers and sisters out there who have the testimony of Messiah Yeshua and who guard his commandments. Shalom to you.